Hello everyone, it's Kiona. I am back with another video. Today I want to show you guys how I completed my DIY board and batten wall project. Stay tuned. So board and batten wall. A board and batten wall is just a wall design that basically used strips of wood um, to create a design on the wall. I chose to do board and batten wall in my home because I knew that I didn't want to clutter the walls with a bunch of pictures or wall hangings or knickknacks. And I also like the way the board and batten wall just instantly adds interest and character to a house. It is also very luxe looking, which I love. Um, and it just, it adds texture to the walls. So I'm gonna show you how I did it and show you what a difference it makes. So the first step in doing your board and batten wall is deciding on a design for your wall. This is, this is just your personal taste. It also has to do with the wall that you're designing. So once you have decided on the design of the wall, you'll then go out to find um, the size of boards that you want to use. Um, I decided to go with oversized squares. I did oversized squares in my downstairs area and I wanted to continue um, this design upstairs. So I'll show you what my downstairs board and batten wall looks like now. So here's the first space where I did the board and batten wall. Um, this is our formal dining area, so I really wanted to um, have some separation with this space um, because this is an open floor plan area. Um, so our living room is like right next to this. Um, so the board and batten wall allowed me to um, kind of make this space um, a space of its own, a place of its own, while also um, keeping the walls white allowed me to um, make sure everything's still tied together. Um, as you will see also, I decided to add the board batten wall on this side to kind of tie it into the formal dining room area. This was a large space. This wall is over nine feet high and it was just a large blank space. And again, I didn't want to cl clutter the wall with photos or wall hangings. I just wanted something simple and luxe looking to add character to it. And it really made a huge difference. I do have some wall hangings on the wall and I'm not finished with the house yet, but I found these at at, um, home goods and they do the same thing that I, I would want my board and batten wall to do they add texture they're not quite flat um, these are I forget the kind of cases they are but they have like a flower in the inside with a um, I don't know um, glass in front of it So step number two of the board and batten wall project will be to gather your tools and materials. Um, one of the first things that I would suggest you do is to measure your wall so that you will have a better assessment of how much uh, material, material you'll need or definitely how many boards you'll need um, once you decide on your design. But here's a list of things that you'll need. You'll need a caulk gun, a miter saw or miter box, a measuring tape, a nail gun or hammer, a leveler, a spackling tool. You'll also need a speed square. Um, for materials, you'll need board, you'll need liquid nails, which is a type of glue. You'll need nails, paint, paintable caulk, sandpaper, and um, spackle and or wood filler. Once you have decided on the design of your project and you have measured your wall, you'll next head to your local hardware store to choose your boards and of course purchase any materials that you need. Um, I chose to um, purchase my boards from Lowe's. Their boards are priced per board, whereas the boards at Home Depot are priced per foot. So you will have to just multiply the price that's listed times the number of feet um, that you have in boards. So for my project, I purchased primed MDF boards from Lowe's that were a half inch thick. They were three and a quarter um, inch high. They were also um, 12 feet and eight 
feet long boards, eight foot. Is it, is it 12 foot or 12 feet long? Ugh, I don't know. Thank you, you too. Okay, so step three of the board and batten wall project is to measure, cut, and apply. Let me show you how I did it. So the first step of getting the boards on the wall is to just frame it. Use the boards to just frame the wall. Um, you'll need to make sure you put liquid nails on the back side of the boards. You'll need a leveler to make sure the boards are level and then use your nail gun or hammer and nails to attach the boards to the wall. Just nailing the boards onto the wall is sometimes not enough to keep the boards up there. So that's why it's important to add the liquid nails before you nail it because it does reinforce the board on the wall. It also helps the boards not to bow. So the liquid nails is an important step. As a side note, one of the best tools that I invested in as a DIYer is a cordless nail gun. I got mine from Home Depot. It's the Ryobi model. It really helped this project to go along much, much quicker. So now that the wall is all framed out, it's time to decide what size squares you want on your wall. For me, I decided that I'd make my squares three feet high and three feet wide. So what I did was I cut a scrap piece of board three feet long to use as a spacer. So every time I placed a board, vertical or horizontal, um, I used a spacer so that I wouldn't have to measure every time that I did a square and all of my squares would be the same size. The problem though is your wall may not permit you to do the square size that you want. Um, and I show you on the illustration to the side. So you may have to make some adjustments to the choice that you made for your, your square size. I hope you understood that. <laughs> okay. So the next step will be to cover all of the nail holes. I also will be using dry decks to, um, to go over the seams of the wood and to fill in any spaces. So I'll show you what that looks like. But the dry decks has to, or the spackling is what it's called. It has to go um, on top of the nails and on the seams so that this looks seamless in the end. The key is to not put too much. Um, I've already started to do it here and this is what it looks like once I put the dry decks in. So now that I have stackled, I need to use a piece of sandpaper to knock down any humps in the wall. So this just, the stackling closes any gaps that were in the wall. Um, 
It just makes it look smooth. So I just have to sand it down a bit before I caulk. Caulking will be the next step. So for this step, you will need a caulk gun and caulking, paintable caulk. Um, you'll be placing the caulk where the boards meet the wall. For the spackling, you're placing spackle where the board meets the board. But for caulking, you're caulking where the board meets the wall. You really don't need as much as I'm putting here. It's just that I'm trying to record this. But um, you just need enough to cover the space so that you won't see any um separation from the board and the wall and once you have placed the caulking there you'll need to smooth it with your fingers and then wipe excess with the wet paper towel or something So we made it to the final step of the board and batten wall project, which is painting. Um, it took me a moment to find the right color that fit this space. And I am not a good painter at all. So this part of the project is full of mistakes, but here we go. I thought I really liked this color, paint, this color of paint, but, um, not with this color carpet. So I'm trying out some grays and these look the same, but they're a little bit different. Um, I really wanted a lighter gray, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the one on the bottom. Unless I go get another paint sample and try another one because I really want to, it doesn't have to match that, but um, to complement the the faux wall that we're going to do. But this is what the finished caulking looks like. I'm going to decide on a paint color and then that's it. So I found an old box of paint or an old can of paint in the garage. It was gray and I was like, well, let me not be wasteful. Let me just use this gray. It's super ugly. That's why. It was still full. And Vince does not like this color. So I am going to have to paint over this awful looking gray color. Here I go. finishing up this wall um, it's painted it probably needs another coat but I had to do the blue tape the painters tape so that I can finish up the bottom of the wall so not much to go again this project should not take this long it's just life um, that took me longer um, I'm probably next for this room going to put up the brick wall paneling on this side of the room um, so once I finish painting, we will go into the next phase of zhushing up my husband's man cave. So this gray I like so much better than the really dark ones. Um, so th I definitely would suggest you have to go with um, what fits your house, what fits your style. I've seen beautiful, beautiful board and batten walls that were super dark, that maybe they had like a navy blue or even black sometimes. It looked gorgeous for that house. But for this space, the lighter gray, of course it matches the rest of the house, a more neutral gray tone. Um, it was a better fit for this wall. So here we go.
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one. Thank you.